Hi everyone, welcome back.、Uh, if you're new, I am Emmy. So,、uh, in today's video, I'm going to share with you five habits that can lead to a more meaningful life. So, let's get started. Now, being thankful is one of the best healing tools in our life. Can encounter a lot of、um, difficulties and challenges and downturns in our life,、uh, and sometimes we, we may perceive it as being not worthy of living. But if we are always thankful, can always see beautiful things around us, and then we might think, oh, perhaps our life is still worth、um, of living. So, keeping a notebook、um, to record everything we are thankful for every day. Um, this would really make us、um, become a happy person. Now,、um, this habit was formed this year, or perhaps last year,、um, in 2020. So, every day we're bombarded with negative news. So,、um, taking out some time to reflect upon what we're thankful for in our life、um, really helps us to,、um, I think, face bravely the challenges of life. So, this is my notebook、um, in which I record everything that I am thankful for.、Um, so, this is the kind of cover page. And my habit is I would write down three things I am thankful before、uh, going to bed.、Um, okay, I think this is the only piece that I can show you guys.、Um, this was written、uh, in 2000. 20, the 27th of July. And the first point that I was grateful for was that that day I went to a super beautiful villa and I relaxed a lot.、And、so, yeah, I was thankful for that.、Uh, and that same evening, I talked with a、um, pastor、um, in our church and I learned a lot、um, from his words. So, I was thankful for that as well.、Um, and then the third one is my EE process was going very well,、um, and I was thankful for that. Now, this might sound a bit weird at the first glance, but once you get into this habit, you will find it so useful. Now, it is not possible to let your friends and family、um, to completely understand your difficulties. So, writing a letter to yourself、um, is a really good way to record,、uh, to narrate,、um, to help you to relieve、um, some of your negative feelings and be encouraged. Um, so, the first letter I wrote to myself was in, I think, 2014. So,、um, six years ago, when I was like only 10, 11 years old.、Um, and the reason behind this is because I am perfectly fine with encountering challenges and difficulties. What I'm not fine with is letting those things go without learning anything from them. So, writing a letter to yourself,、uh, reflecting upon the problem, is a really good way to learn from challenges and difficulties. Now, what is really good is when you read back to those letters, they really、um, give you a sense. That you have grown a lot. Now, I have two、um, of my recent letters that I wrote to myself. This one was、um, last June when I finished my junior year of IB, and this was just a few weeks ago.、Um, I wrote、um, it to myself to the 2020s Emmy. So I'm just gonna read, I think I can,、um, the beginnings of, of this. Okay.、Um, Dear Emmy, thank you so much for another brilliant year as a Marymount junior. Not just grades, but also spiritually and socially. You experience failures, difficulties, sadness, and anxiety, but also grace, love, care, help from our greatest God. This is a great year of experience and of life. 
Thank you for your diligence, your hard work, your self-motivation, and your dream. Never lose confidence in you. You are the best, no matter how、um, other people view and judge. Don't underlook to your shortcomings. Those are all areas to improvements. Failures are sometimes more precious than successes. They're not points of weaknesses. They're areas that suggest new possibilities and new dreams. Your passion for psychology shines through every area and judgment in your life, and this is very beautiful. Okay, so yeah, this is、um, the first few lines I wrote myself after I finished my junior year. It was a difficult year, and I had、um, I have had a lot of、um, experiences. So yeah, so、um, it's just very beautiful reading back to these letters. Okay, now I'm opening the one that I wrote just a few weeks ago. So, okay.、Um, first, congratulations for making another wonderful, a bit painful, but definitely amazing year. I know you're tired and sometimes want to give up everything, but thank you for being so brave, even facing the darkest part of your life. Failures bring to growth.、Um, this is、um, the sentence that best summarizes your year. Thank you for loving yourself so much, even when you seem not to deserve love. You have been selfish. You have been rude, impatient at times. But that's okay because you've realized this, and you put in effort to change them. An adult who is mature enough to have the courage to be grateful, even in difficult times, knowing profoundly that in, it is in these difficult times that we are shaped into the most beautiful and sacred beings. Yeah.、Um, so this is the beginning of 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 this. <laughs> Um, and um, yeah, I'm really grateful for everything that I have experienced this year. Some of them are not the cutest thing in the world,、um, but definitely I've learned so much、um, from them, and I really feel that I have grown. And that's why this this year's letter is super long.、Um, I just I it took me like ages to finish it because I just had so much thing to. To, to write. So the next thing is kind of、um, related to the previous one.、Um, this is where you record your failures and successes. Now, to me, failures do not mean failing completely, and successes do not mean succeeding、um, completely. Um, so my habit is to record all of them down and reflect through each of them at the end of the year.、Um, when I read through my failures, I reflect upon what the failure has taught me, and when I read through the successes, I think how these、um, successes might、um, impact my future life and.、Um, What are the dangerous parts of successes that I should not、uh, step into? I think、um, everything happens in our life、um, for us to take something away from it. So if we just let those events go away,、um, then those events might as well be、um, wasted. So we have to make a place for them. Hi. So、um, I don't really want to make you guys see me like this, but.、Um, I recorded that piece one time before, but then I discovered that I haven't saved it, and this is the reason that I'm、um, uh, recording this again. <laughs>、um, okay, so this is、um, my failure list for 2020. It has five failures、um, that I experienced in 2020, and、um, I think the only one that I can share with you guys is the fourth one. Uh, which is insomnia. I experienced literally the worst、um, period of insomnia in 2020. It's literally、um, devastating. I mean, <laughs> it's it's just、um, I experienced that twice this year: once in February and once in August.、Um, each of them lasting for like a week or so. 
um, and this I said this was literally um, the biggest challenge um, that I had in 2020 but it is from this experience that I learned a lot about my lifestyle um, and how I should uh, be um, dealing with um, you know things that are, are out of my expectation um, because I am the type of person who has a very um, kind of fixed um, time plan for sleeping and waking up so once this time plan is kind of disrupted I will get very mad um, so this is kind of um, the um, the thing that I explained in my last video about time management um, it's like I have this time plan from this time to that time I am going to sleep and if my body cannot follow that timeline I would feel very um, frustrated so uh, it was a very difficult time um, I don't know if you have experienced insomnia ever but it's literally uh, it's literally disgusting so you um, you lay down on your bed and then you have your eyes opened until like 5 a.m. So I usually go to bed at 10 p.m. and you can imagine what it feels like from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. having your eyes opened. But um, still, uh, <laughs> that was experience and I did learn um, quite a lot from it. Now, this is actually a super important topic to cover at the beginning of, of the year. Um, now, for a lot of people, goals cannot be achieved. If we achieve something, they're not called goals. Uh, now, I think um, one, one TED talk that changed my view of setting goals is um is the one in which uh, the speaker talked about how we should not really focus on the goals we should focus on the ways um we achieve the goals because whether or not we can achieve the goal we cannot control but we can control our behavior we can control the those sort of building blocks towards that goal so instead of um, really focusing on those goals we should focus more on how we achieve them um, now this is actually the list uh, that I have for my yearly goals um, I divided them into um, three three uh, components the first one is character development so the sort of uh, character and temperament control that I want to gain in 2021 habit development and um, so what are the sort of habits that um, I want to develop in um, 2021 and then action development uh, which are the things I want to accomplish in this new year and then I have left a note to myself um, which says be brave and courageous um, this is a new beginning now leave all the regrets and sorrows in the in 2020 down transform them into energy and be prepared for this new year and brilliant beginning be thankful and grateful for everything that comes to your way um, and no more worries now I'm just gonna take you through two examples of um, my yearly goals and the plan that I made for myself to achieve them. The first one is, um, so in the character development list I have um, respect. So I want to become a more respectful person and respect other people more. And how um, I am going to achieve this is written in the habit development. Um, I have this very bad habit um, in that I don't knock the door at the door before I go into the room. So um, I said knock the door before entering the room is um, the top um, habit, the top one habit development um, in my list. So I think through developing this habit, I can become a more respectful person. Um, 
And the second thing uh, in the action development is I want to um, lose weight to 48 kilograms. And, um, and uh, that is, um, that will or could be reached um, in my habit development again. Running every day, drink uh, 1.5 liters of water per day and, um, and eating low calorie food. Okay, so those are the two examples of my yearly goals and as you can see, I'm not just focusing on the goal, I'm not just setting the goal, okay, I want to become a more respectful person or I want to lose weight to 48 kilograms. I'm actually um, transforming those goals into the habits that I want to acquire and through acquiring those habits, I hope that I can achieve those goals. Now, keeping a collection of beautiful quotes is a bit personal and I think this, um, rather than being a habit, I think this is more of a personal choice. Um, some people might not find it helpful, but personally I do find it super helpful and um, I think you can see that behind me um, on my wall there is actually this collection of quotes that I put in it uh, and the reason behind this is uh, because sometimes um, those quotes can be really helpful in encouraging you um, to um, to go on and um, helping you from your failures now those quotes can be from from famous people or um, sometimes they're just lines from um, poems uh, I love poems and uh, I know that a lot of people do not like poems they think poems are not you know um, practical but I think that just that really depends on personal personal taste but I think poems are really helpful they they're like Rather than being practically helpful, they're more like spiritually helpful. Now, um, this is the, I think the quote that I wanted to comment on. Uh, it's not actually a quote, it is like a, a message that is taken from a poem. Uh, it's called On Love. This was a poem that is uh, being shared with me by one of my um, teachers. Um, she's very nice and uh, this was um, after I have experienced a super big failure. Um, she has shared this, this poem with me. And the, the, the main message of the poem is basically love is sometimes hard and painful, it sometimes leaves necked, but that is because we're ready to be shaped or reshaped into a more sacred being. Um, and the author says if we are not ready to accept pains and failures from love, then we may as well not um, receive love itself. Thank you.